again. My name is Karis. Welcome to Pilates. Holy shit, you guys. This is a one woman show here. Like the camera, the fucking lighting, all this shit. And that, that's not my strong suit. My strong suit is talking shit and making things burn in a really good way. Um, so I need an assistant, man, but you have to be willing to be uh, poorly treated and underpaid. Um, and you also have to not be a weird creeper because I don't know if it's just like guys think that's their in, like, oh, I'll be her assistant and then she'll fuck me. It's like, uh, I'll probably just like do like Lugatu and like throw hot coffee in your face. Anyway, if you'd like to be my assistant for like no money, let me know. Welcome to Pilates. I need to do this shit more often. I'm a busy bitch, but fuck, my body feels so much better when I do Pilates. If you have a ball, I want you to use it. If you don't have one, fucking get one um, because it will change your life, especially if you're gonna do mat Pilates. Uh, but you know what? I might be doing equipment Pilates again on my own terms soon. So also keep your ears open for that shit. Okay, I feel like my face keeps turning into a ghost when I step towards you guys, so I'm not gonna do that anymore. Stand at the top of your mat. You're in a neutral pelvis position, hip bones, pubic bone on the same in a standing position, vertical plane. So that means that your tailbone is pointed slightly down. Make sure that your shoulders are rolled open without being retracted. So palms facing your hips is a good rule of thumb. Um, your fingers are reaching down towards the sides of your feet and your feet are balanced between the ball of the foot and um, the pinky toe and the heel. After the furnace drill, I'm really not very smart. So if I say weird shit, that's why. Cardio, bam, it's, it's fucking rough. So I want you to think about lightly rolling the shoulders open and lightly engaging your triceps. We're gonna do a little balance work first because this is something we all need work on. So feet are about hip distance apart and just lift one leg up and stand there. And then I just want you to hinge from the hip, lower down and lift up, lower down, and lift up. One more time, lower down, lift up, and now we're gonna cycle through, so extend that knee, sweep, point the toe, come back up, cycle through, point, and come back up. We're gonna switch directions, because I don't wanna be here long, meaning doing Pilates for long. And then go ahead and Step that foot down, shake it out, other side. It's okay to hold on to something if you need to, by the way. It doesn't mean you're like a failure, but um, it means you need to work on your balance. So other side. And some days my fucking balance is just off. Ooh, this side is being weird today. So hinge and hinge. Remember that we need to strengthen our hip flexors. It's one of those things, kind of like the quad, where people think because they're like, dominant or always fired up, they're strong. It's the opposite. Extend, point, flex, extend, point, and reverse, point, flex. This is a lot more satisfying when you're able to drop your leg below the other one. Set that foot down, press into the ball of the foot, the heel, find that balance again on that triangle of your foot. Arms back into position. If they left, I get all fancy when I do balance. Take an inhale into your rib cage, feel your rib cage expand out to the side. So none of this and none of this. We want this to pull up and this to expand. As you exhale, you're reinforcing that neutral position, almost like trying to pull the waistband of your pants up into your abdomen more. Inhale, and on this exhale, you'll nod your chin and roll down one vertebra at a time. So we want the knees to soften, we want the weight to be in your toes. We want to keep the arms long, traveling with your shoulders. So you're, you're in a C curve of your spine. So not like ragdoll, right? So we're in control, keeping those abs pulled up. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, think about using your abs to restack your spine. Inhale, and exhale, nod your chin. Make sure you're looking at your body as you go. Eyes on the thighs, palms facing in. Just try to let gravity take hold of your head. Inhale. Exhale. Restocking your spine. And we're going to come down. Do that one more time. Inhale. The hardest thing to remember to do for many of us is to keep your head neutral 
in a standing position. And then go ahead and bend your knees and come into a quadruped position. So we're gonna have flat feet here. I always do that. I think it's better in this position. Okay, you're gonna have flat feet here. Your hands, I'm usually up on my toes, which is why I mentioned that. Hands are gonna be directly under your shoulders with your fingers fanned out. And I want you to think about screwing your arms into the floor. Pull your abs up and in. So we want a flat back. Upper spine is extended ever so slightly, really neutral, but make sure that your abs are pulled up and in. I want you to protract, so push the floor away, and then engage your lats, hug your armpits in. We're gonna do cat stretch, it's different from cat cow. Um, I really fucking know anything about cat cow, this is just cat stretch from Pilates. So uh, inhale to prepare, and on your exhale, I want you to think about pulling your pubic bone up into your navel. And see, this is exactly why I knew I needed Pilates, because my hip flexors are so tight that I can't really round very well. Straighten out on that same exhale, and then inhale, you're extending your upper spine. So not craning your neck, just letting your chest almost like pull through your arms. And lower down, and then again, exhale. So in my school of thought, I don't stretch. I find it counterproductive. When my hip flexors are tight, to me that means that my I've been slacking on um, core strengthening stuff. So, uh, particularly pelvic floor. Exhale round. It's very subtle, and it's what drives everyone crazy about Pilates. Lift that upper spine. Make sure you're not sticking your butt out either, and then come back to neutral. Roll your wrists out, and then. Let's lay waste to your abs. This is what's going on with these two. Looks suspect. Okay, so you're gonna place the ball in between your knees if you, if you have a ball. If you don't have a ball, that's okay. Um, you can use like a cushion, small and light if you have one. If you don't, don't sweat it. It's fine, you can do without. So feet are parallel about this distance apart. You're holding onto the backs of your thighs. I want you to think about pulling yourself up into a straight back. So I hope you guys can see me well. Um, so if you have the mobility to arch here, I don't want an arch. I want a flat back. So remember what I said about we always kind of want to be here with our chin. The easiest way to think about where your head is supposed to be is you want to line your earlobe up with your shoulder, okay? Which, yeah, means you have to be trying to double chin, but that's where it's supposed to be. So inhale, prepare. And then just like the cat stretch we did, we're gonna exhale and try to round the lumbar spine. And I can already tell a huge difference from where I probably would have been in uh, before the cat stretch. So I don't often do the cat stretch, but it's a really good place for especially beginners to start or people who've been slacking. Rounding that lumbar spine, trying not to round the shoulders. So I'm really trying to pull my sacrum down to the floor without letting my shoulders go back on their own. Inhale and exhale, pulling in deeply here. And then we're gonna start lowering down. So you can adjust your feet if you need to, because you want to keep them straight. So I'm gonna try to keep my chest here, right? Not let my chest go without my legs. And I'm gonna roll down, lightly squeeze that ball. I'm gonna slight posterior tilt here. And then down. Only go to the point where you can stay in control, meaning you can come back up without lurching or jumping your feet up. Inhale, exhale. So remember, not this. We're trying to start from here. I'm trying to pull my navel back to my sacrum. I'm keeping my toes down. If they wanna fly up, it's probably because you're leading with your shoulders. Inhale, exhale. Rounding up, inhale, stack. So when I haven't done Pilates in a while, this will really, I don't wanna say aggravate my hips, but they get really fatigued. And that's again, that kind of indication to me that I've been slacking on um, core work. And one more like that. So remember, this is supposed to be difficult, but you have to remember that I've been doing this a really long time. If you're new, 
this might be as far as you go today. Same goes for if you're top heavy, if you have boobs, you're going to be affected differently than someone like me who has big legs. These anchor me to the floor. I'm built for this shit, motherfucker. You guys have your own things, but this, this is mine. And then stack, that's fine. Let's take the ball off for a second. Bring the soles of your feet together. <sighs> Just get a little stretch from those hips. I know, I said stretch, but that's pretty much my version of stretching. So, an unwelcome guest. So, come back to that start position. Um, if you feel strong, you can bring your arms up. The problem is gonna be, it's gonna make it a lot harder, so do whatever you need to do. Everything else is, the, everything is the same if you're um, gonna keep your hands behind your thighs. So you lift your arms up, nice flat back, lower those arms. Same thing, adjusting my feet, trying to roll down through my spine. See how my arms stay parallel to the floor? Exhale. So we generally exhale on flexion and exertion. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, flexion. And we also inhale on extension in the, the style of Pilates I do. My hips are lit up and that's exactly why I need this shit. When I do this regularly, most of the time it does not cause that like crampiness in my hips. I get it guys. The boring stuff, right, slow and all that is not nearly as fun as like deadlifting, but when I do this regularly, it makes a huge difference. Adding on, bring the arms back, sweep those arms around, <sighs> exhaling on exertion, coming up in that C curve, arms up, lower the arms, <sighs> start with the lumbar spine, rolling down. So I'm getting a, a big stretch through the front of my ankles by holding my feet down in that position. That's where a lot of us are extremely tight in our ankles because we're rarely like this. So I'm keeping my big toe down. Also making the calves work really hard to anchor me. Last time. And lift up and rest. So, oh, those hips. Um, and just remember you can rest when you need to. Um, if you're not used to doing a lot of exercises like this with your head up, then it can be, your neck can get achy. So it takes time and practice to gain the mobility to keep your head in pretty much like an upright position. Often people are kind of like back here. They don't have the strength to hold their head up. And you know, especially if you're smart, but it's just like, your head's heavy. I'm kidding. Okay, so grab the ball. If I had two balls, haha. <laughs> Um, this would really come in handy now. I don't because I lent mine out to April. Um, she's, that's okay, she gets it. She's the best. So I'm gonna just keep my knees together and then put the ball towards the bottom of my rib cage. And so if you, I was gonna say if you lift, this is really important, but really any of us, because what this is gonna help us do now is get more thoracic extension. And that's what a lot of us need. Um, but it is the bench press position, right? Well, not like this. Um, low bar, right? Deadlift. Where do a lot of people lose their movements? In their lats. So you'll interlace your fingers behind the back of your head. And it's important, you wanna think about holding your head here. So you're trying to relinquish control of your head into your hands. You're basically, you're cradling your head. Um, so don't push on your head. If your hands are doing this, you're pushing on your head and you're also doing some dumb shit with your shoulders. So we want to fully interlace and those elbows, elbows should be visible in the corners of your eyes. So with your pelvis, I want you to think about trying to keep it flat, so neutral. That means, see how my hip bones are higher than my pubic bone, because now I'm laying down, right? So I'm going to try to put them on the same horizontal plane and that's going to be what protects my lumbar spine maintaining this pelvic lumbar stability. Sound familiar? I don't know why they're all agitated. Okay, so navel to spine, see how easy it is to kind of do that. So I'm pulling my navel into my spine, inhale to prepare, and then I'm gonna exhale, 
Now my chin, curl head, neck, and chest. And I'm gonna lift a little beyond the regular chest lift. So I'm like lifting myself off the ball. And then I'm pulling my navel back down onto the ball. See, I caught myself tucking my pelvis. So that, by doing that, that's what is um, lighting up my hip flexors. I'm basically using my hip flexors to shorten the distance that my um, chest has to go. We also do that like this. <sighs> Exhale. So I'm going to keep an eye on my um, hip flexors, this, or excuse me, my pelvis. Up a little higher. Just way harder. Down and back all the way. Inhale. Where your elbows are visible in the corners of your eyes. Ah, you fucking pelvis. You're keeping your inner thighs lightly squeezed together. Try to come off the ball just a little bit. <sighs> trying to melt into my spine. Trying not to grip with my hip flexors. One last time. <sighs> Coming up. And then I'm just gonna lower back all the way. And enjoy the stretch. Again, if you don't have a ball, it's not a big deal. Um, you can get these off Amazon for like less than 10 bucks. Just Pilates ball, no special brand or anything. It feels so nice. So, go ahead and take the ball out. Set the ball in between your knees. Let's do the pelvic curl. So this is probably the most important Pilates exercise for you to master because it involves a little bit of everything. Um, if you are like a new mom or an expecting mom, this is a really great exercise to do up until a certain point. Always talk to your doctor first. Anyway, your feet are parallel, about fist distance apart. Ball in between the knees if you have it, but I want you to make sure that you're not gripping with your groin. It's just kind of like a light squeeze. Um, pelvis neutral, so that means you have space between your mat and your lower back. You have a natural arch of your lower back. Doing this is not a natural position of your spine. Look what it did to my neck, what it did to my shoulders, and also how it made my abdomen bulge. That's not neutral. You gotta get out of that bullshit ab teacher class thing that they tell everybody to like push your navel down. Yeah, you want your navel down, but you wanna use your fucking abs to do it, not your, anyway. Excuse me. So, arms are gonna be at your side, rolling the shoulders back. So, my chest is proud, but my pelvis stayed neutral, okay? And that's how we want it, right? So triceps are engaged, and I think about lengthening my middle finger onto the floor so that I'm not just relaxed here, it's active. I'm gonna inhale to prepare, and then you're gonna exhale, and try to engage your pelvic floor. So the, the best cue I've ever heard for this, inhale, relax, is from Brianna Battles, who um, deals with a lot of um, new expecting, new and expecting moms, zip your clit. So that is like, boom, made so much sense because it's a lot more subtle than how people often will think they're doing their pelvic floor. For dudes, I've, it's been confirmed from one of my male clients, pull your balls up is the same idea. So um, yes, we're talking about body parts. It's so gross. So, oh, did you see I was cheating there? Cheating bitch. Scoot your heels in closer to your body, but make sure you're not touching your butt. Okay. So inhale, and then zip the clit. Or pull your balls up, whatever. And then inhale, relax. <sighs> Trying to keep that tension out of my quads because just like my hip flexors, well quads are also hip flexors, but they will want to take over, so they want to like shove my back down. You have to remember to stay really subtle in order to get your pelvic floor. And then we're gonna go into the full pelvic curl. So zip it up. And now you're gonna pull your hip bones down to the floor. So now I am imprinted, but I'm sucking down versus pushing down. And then I'm gonna roll up off the mat, one vertebra at a time. I wanna maintain a posterior tilt of my pelvis, not crunch my shoulders. Inhale and then reverse. So I wanna lower my sternum first, not my hips. Roll down. So we're trying to move in sequential order of the spine. Inhale at the bottom, start with that zip, pulling it in, 
rolling it up, lightly squeezing the ball, posterior tilt, so pubic bone is higher than your hip bones here. Exhale, roll it down. Lightly squeezing the ball. Notice if you want to kind of just relax it one more time. And roll down. I'm keeping this very basic because I haven't done a class in a while with you guys, so um, I feel like we all need it. So go ahead and grab the ball out of between your knees if you have it. If you don't, no big deal. Then you'll lift one leg at a time into tabletop using your core. If you do that correctly, you should feel your core immediately. If you do this shit, then, I mean, good fucking luck. So one leg at a time, safer on your back. And I'm trying to think about not jostling my entire body. I have the ball, so I'm going to put it back between my knees. Arms open to a T. That same idea. I'm trying to lengthen my middle finger onto the floor. Roll my shoulders back. Active arms. Not here. Here. So then I'm going to inhale and rotate my legs. Or excuse me. Really, it is legs, but everything below my mid spine over to the right. So there's no twisting. I'm just rotating. So upper spine, this stays still. And this is moving as one unit. So this buttock will lift up, but you shouldn't be shortening one side of your waist. This should stay even. And it's not uncommon for one side to be um, stiffer or uh, more restricted than the other. You guys can probably hear my voice. It's kicking my ass. But I, the rule of Pilates really, and core work in my mind is the better you get at it, the harder it becomes. But because you're able to zero in on it a lot better. Rotate. And that's good. Go ahead and take the ball out. Just gonna do chest lift real fast, which is basically the opposite of pelvic curl that we just did. So, ball between your knees if you have it. If you don't, I do want your feet to be uh, parallel and about fist distance apart. Don't bring your feet all the way together for this. So, interlace fingers behind the back of your head. Thumbs at the base of the skull, just like we did a second ago. And again, we're trying to keep pelvis neutral. The spine is neutral, but when we lift this part of the spine, the, the spine is no longer neutral, right? Because this is flexed. Remember your spine is a series of joints, so if you flex one part of your spine or extend one part of your spine, the rest of your spine is going to do that as well, at least to some degree. What we want to do is minimize how much of a degree. See how I keep kicking my legs out here? You lazy bitch. Okay, so heels closer to my butt. If you're super flexible, just make sure your heels aren't on your butt. Okay, interlace those fingers, thumbs at the base of the skull, elbows visible in the corners of the eyes. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, curl, head, neck, and chest forward. So again, not letting your pelvis tuck back. Inhale, deepen. Lower with control. Without relaxing. So this is just a different phase of the movement. So now my abdominals are stretched. And now they're contracted. So I'm trying to move my ribs towards my pelvis. I'm not trying to come up like that. I'm trying to actually keep my mid spine down and then just lift my mid spine and cervical spine as one unit. So don't push on your head. Inhale. Exhale, lower down. Ah, my fucking pelvis just moved. You bitch. It's not about being perfect, but it's about correcting when you notice that you um, are incorrect. This is the best you'll be able to do. Inhale, deepen. Lower down with control. Exhale up. Inhale, deepen. Lower down with control. Going into chest lift with rotation. Inhale. And exhale, lift head, neck, and chest. And inhale, deepen. So now this is staying still and this is rotating as one unit. So not like this, right? You're not cranking on your neck. You're just rotating all of this as one unit and trying to keep your hips still. So see how my shoulders never touch the mat? My chest is in line with this. Do you see how if I go further than that, how I'm not rotating anymore? I've splayed open. Inhale. So I'm thinking about trying to like wring out a towel or something. So I'm trying to get flatter and flatter there. And 
two, two, one, and one, and lower it back down. Okay. It's crazy. When I take a little time off Pilates, it's, it's like I'm a stranger in my own fucking body. But it's true. When you neglect the things that are literally mind-body and that force you to take it down a notch, it, um, you're generally clumsy as fuck. So the roll up, palms face each other, and arms are back. So notice I'm not like this. I'm only going to the point where I can keep my spine neutral. So remember, that means I have some space here. My ribs will be up slightly. That's okay. This is extension, right? Pelvis neutral. That's how we're going to know that we're in, honestly, like a neutral spine. So palms go back. Engage those inner thighs, point the toes. Inhale, lift head, neck, and chest. So see how it's very similar to the exercise we did earlier? Roll yourself up into a C curve. So same thing as before, articulating down. So I'm trying to pull down here. And once the ribs touch, arms back. Inhale, head, neck, and chest. Lengthen those hamstrings onto the floor. Coming up into C curves. So see my shoulders are stacked over my pelvis still. Can you see me? I just feel like I get into a weird rotation. Please don't hit my head. I have to move the mat. It's now I'm all weird. I'm all weird. I think that's better. Okay. Arms back. Head, neck, and chest. Pause. So see how I'm pulling down through here? So I'm trying to articulate off the floor. But as soon as I um, took my attention away from my legs, my knees bent. I don't like this either. <sighs> this is what sucks about being live, but I feel like you need to see. You need to see more of me. Who the fuck doesn't need to see more of me? So again, trying to stay long through the backs of my knees, not lead with my chest, but trying to move down through here. So I can really feel how um, how much more stiff my spine is than usual. So I'm going to try to slow it down. And when I'm really trying to focus on my form, breath kind of goes out the window, but that's okay because that's kind of the last detail we look at. because it can be really hard to keep it straight and that's not, it's important, but it'll come along. So pause, don't overflex those quads and come up. Okay, we're gonna do a, a paused roll up in both directions. Um, and then, yeah, do some more action and send you guys on your merry way. So what that means is you're gonna come back and you're gonna find what I call your sticking point that's where you kind of want to collapse and I want you to try to hold it there and then we're going to go up and down just a little bit. It's going to suck. It's going to make you stronger in your weak point. Come down, blah, blah, blah. I'll talk you through that. We're going to do that in both directions though. So prepare yourself. So palms facing each other, long through the knees without flexing the quad. So I'm keeping my heels down, pull the abs in, inhale, and then exhale, trying to lower my sacrum onto the floor without pantsing myself. So I'm just looking for that spot where it gets tough, like right there, that's where I start shaking. And then up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit, uh, ah, down a little bit, try to scoop and then up all the way. Whew. I know, right? And then we're gonna come down all the way. Really, really trying not to overflex my quads. That's my worst habit. Quads, hip flexors, all that shit. Look how tight I am here. Inhale. So now we're going to try to find the sticking point on the way up, which is usually right after takeoff. Oh, yes. Up a little bit. Down a little bit. Heels down. Knees just slightly soft. One more time and then up all the way. Ooh. Ooh. I'm so angry at myself. 
Why have I been so shitty about Pilates? Bending my knees and stuff? Okay, so balance yourself on your sits bones and then roll onto your back for the dreaded triple series. Legs together, tabletop, make sure your knees aren't in towards your chest or try to avoid it as much as possible. And then your lower or lift head, neck and chest. Right hand on the right knee, left hand on the left knee. Bear down on it slightly. And then inhale, arms and legs go in opposite directions. And exhale, bring it in. So the head, neck and chest, the whole trunk actually doesn't move. So we're trying to keep the pelvis in the same position. So trying not to tuck on the way in. Keeping the head, neck and chest in the same position. Last one, biceps by the ears. Sweep it together. Both hands transfer onto the right knee. Extend that left leg long. Switch. The toes slide past each other at the midpoint. Really try not to tuck that pelvis. Try to keep it flat. If you need to rest your neck, that's fine. Now pause with the right leg bent, left leg extended. Hands behind the back of the head. Rotate your sternum towards that thigh. Switch, switch, switch. Don't tuck. Ah, last one. Bring it to center and rest. Ah, it's so terrible, but so awesome. Okay, roll onto your side. We're gonna do a glute series real fast and then send you guys on your merry way. I can never take like, oh wait, no, we started at 15. We're good. We started car this time. So I thought I was, I was like, damn, I'm talking my ass off. I do anyway, but. So your bottom leg is gonna be at a 90 degree angle. So the top of the thigh should be parallel to the top of the mat and your shin should be right up against the edge of the mat, okay? So not this. And that's really important because this bottom side is gonna be stabilizing along with your entire core. So then your other leg will float up. Can't wait till I have a fucking gym to do this shit in. Okay, so this leg is at hip height. So this is where I see a lot of people work. You don't need to go there. You need to try to keep your hips stacked. So you see how you can actually see because I'm wearing a crop top, um, how this, this pulls in like I'm clearly at an angle. See if I do that, how now the waistband is straight, right? So you have this little space between the mat and your ribs, the house for the mouse, as they call it in uh, classical Pilates. So this leg is straight and then you're going to internally rotate. See how that caused that to cave in? So you got to try to do that simultaneously and that's going to change your range of motion, but we don't want to fucking cheat. And then you'll lower the leg down and lift just to hip height, maybe a tiny bit above down and up. So I'm thinking about stretching this glute, contracting the glute medius, the gluteus medius specifically. So right around this neighborhood down, down, and I'm trying to minimize the rest of the movement in my body. Most people put their hands here. I actually like to get hands on on this side because this side is the, can be quiet sometimes. Okay, so then you're gonna bring the leg forward, tap down, lift up, and bring it back. See how I still have that uh, house for the mouse? Bring it forward, down, up, and back forward, down, up, and back. And so we're punctuating each part of the movement. We're not swinging the leg around. So I imagine having like a cup of water balanced on this knee. Oh, it's lit. Me and my butt. Forward, down, up, and back. This palm is up and back. Yep, see how I'm sinking? Lazy bitch. Forward, down, up, and back. Last two down, hold it still, bitch, down, up, and back, oh, bring it forward, oh, pulse for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, oh, hover that leg, finish with clamshells, keep those hips stacked, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Oh my God. 
So you notice I wasn't swinging around, right? So all I was doing was literally rotating, ah, it's mad, um, the femur, right? So trying to keep the pelvis still. Remember, the main things that your core does is stabilize you. Pelvic lumbar stability. Those are the two most important things that your core does. So it's actually trying to hold still, especially while you're moving your limbs, that's gonna challenge it the most. Let's do the other side. So <laughs> this side sucks worse because uh, this side is already mad and it's the side stabilizing. Ooh, he's angry. So this palm is up, this palm. So again, bring this leg so that it's at a perfect 90 degree angle. And then this leg is gonna hover up at hip height and you're gonna internally rotate while preserving the house for the mouse. Down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, two, one, still without swinging, right? Forward, down, up, and back. This side is so much easier for me. And back. And you know, it's because my right side is stronger, so it's doing a better job of stabilizing. That right side, I'm on my left side working right now, right side stabilizing. The right side has to work so much harder because the left side is uh, less stable. So don't always assume that the side that's working that's like sucking at life is at the actual culprit. I know that based on a, a few things, so. But I'm not having any issue keeping the house for the mouse. Forward, down, up, and back. Last two, down, up and back, down, up and back, bring it forward, <laughs> eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, clamshell, open and close, three, four, ah, four, three, two, one. <sighs> so fucking angry. You know, I just noticed that I don't have anyone watching right now, so I'm going to fucking town. So you guys are gonna watch this later. I never mind that, honestly. The only reason I like to do lives is so I can uh, post the whole thing um, to IGTV and not just 15 minutes. All right, we're gonna do the rollover. So rollover, a lot of things that people don't understand is that the rollover and the inversions are a lot of lat and tricep. So this is how you hold your trunk still. Um, so it's a, it's a spinal articulation, just like the pelvic curl was. Um, it's just one on crack. If you haven't done Pilates a lot, if you have existing back issues, you should probably just watch this one first and not jump into it because it is a big stretch on the back. So palms flat, roll the shoulders open, triceps, one leg at a time comes up into tabletop position. Then pull the knees together. We're gonna deconstruct the rollover. So extend your legs out on a diagonal. Inhale up to 90. And then you're gonna roll back. Trying to keep your sit bones pointed up to the ceiling. And you're gonna roll down. So that's phase one. Down to 45. Inhale to 90. Phase two is flex. And right away you should have felt your hamstrings go. <laughs> Roll down. Point 45, adding on again. Inhale up to 90. And this time we'll flex and open to about shoulder width. Same thing, lower down with control. Articulate one vertebra at a time. Sacrum, point the toes this time. Circle around. Inhale up to 90, full rollover. <sighs> Roll back. Flex the feet. Separate your feet to about mat width. Tap the toes. Ah. Trying not to curl the wrist when you do that. And then roll down. <sighs> so much fucking tricep work. 
point, circle around, two more rollovers, inhale, flex, open, tap, so I try to keep my fingers heavy there, that is a really, really hard part for me, but this is why this exercise is so good for me, point, circle, inhale, last one, flex, open, and then roll down. Really big difference on the right side. Point and circle and pull in. And you know, that's okay. Again, you're just trying to notice the differences, not necessarily fix anything. Even just noticing it is gonna make you try to automatically fix it. And that's often enough. Okay, so let's do back, ex uh, back extension, just to make sure we're well-rounded. See more better this way. Um, and then we're done. So, double leg kick, my personal favorite. Um, you're gonna bend the knees in and turn onto one cheek. Interlace your fingers behind the small of your back. Excuse me, and bring your arms down onto the mat. If you can't do that, you can have your hands as far apart as you need to in order to get your shoulders there. Okay. So then you're gonna push your pubic down, bone down to the mat so that your knees hover up and then little kicks. Three, two, one. Extend those knees, thumbs to bum, switch cheeks, lift the knees. Three, two, one. Extend, arms back, thumbs to bum, float. Fold it in, lift the knees. Three, two, one. Extend, reach. Keeping that pubic bone down to protect the lumbar spine. Lift those knees. Three, two, one. And lower down. Forms down. Press yourself back. Rest position. In the style of Pilates I do anyway, we always counter um, extension with flexion because Extension is actually where most people are limited, believe it or not. We'll finish with a little plank action. Hands underneath the shoulders. Extend one leg and then the other. So hug those armpits. Hover one leg up, keeping the hips even. Tap, lift. Pelvic lumbar stability. Last two. One. Set that foot down. Opposite leg, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, up. Set that foot down, lift your hips high, and then walk your hands to your feet and roll up. So we'll finish the same way we started with a roll down. Feet parallel, this distance apart. Arms by your sides, palms facing in, stand up tall, rolling down, oh yeah. So the mobility that changed was especially in my back, because I let my knees soften. I'm not testing my hamstrings, but I'm keeping my abs scooped in, just like I did at the beginning. And now without reaching my shoulders, I'm able to almost touch the mat. When I do Pilates regularly, I can usually get my knuckles all the way down. Okay, you guys are awesome. I'm talking to no one because everyone bailed, which is fine. Again, that's how I prefer it. I get all, you know, weird. Anywho, love you guys. I don't know why I look like a ghost. Creepy, did I die? Anywho, uh, do the workout, practice it. Do it again and again. See ya.